going on, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Fish Talk Live. It's Wednesday, August. We got uh, episode number 42 tonight. August is uh, DIY month on Fish Talk Live. And so we got some great stuff going on. Hey, everyone. You know, one of the coolest things Ron and I were just recently talking about is how cool the viewers of Fish Talk Live are and how well you guys have supported this show and doing your shares and all that. So I was hoping that every single viewer tonight, hey, share this out twice, right? Share it out in your favorite group. Uh, share it out on your page. Share it out on your personal page. Invite your friends. There's a little invite there if you're looking. Just click that. Invite a couple of friends. Let's see if we can get 100 people on tonight. I'm doing my shares right now. Glad you're here with us tonight. I know Ron's stoked for tonight's show. It's going to be awesome tonight. Welcome to Tuesday Fish Talk Live, everybody. We got a super awesome show tonight. We're going to give away a bunch of stuff. There's some new bling bling on ronsicklids.com that we're going to give away. Uh, we're just about ready to start this thing. going on everybody dave gould here tonight and we have an awesome diy show tonight we've got uh we're going to build a k1 media media reactor uh super simple diy project but really cool um for you guys if this is your first time on fish talk live uh let me tell you a little bit we are a live multi-stream gamified show we stream out on youtube right now uh we are streamed on facebook twitch and periscope we also stream on LinkedIn now on the Fish Talk Live page on LinkedIn, so check us out there. Uh, we are a gamified show where we use some awesome gaming software uh, to give away prizes and to have this really kind of cool interaction with y'all. Um, and we just talk about the hottest topics in the fish keeping business and so and the hobby. So, you know, um, this is your place to go to if you're a Facebook fish fan and come check out Ron and his awesome knowledge. Uh, speaking of that, I, every week I get to, um, uh, I've got a lot of notifications pinging me right now. Um, every week I get to introduce Ron Demers. So if you don't know Ron Demers or have never heard of Ron Cichlids, Ron is an African cichlid breeder. He's in West Palm Beach. Um, he breeds the coolest, uh, African cichlids you can find. His haps and peacocks are just like, uh, some of the best in the country that you can find um he's a super awesome guy he's also the guy behind ron cichlids food uh it's it's one of the best mixes that you can get for these particular types of fish uh we coined him last year the fish food chef he's a super awesome guy he's um got three kids he's out there in florida he's an awesome father he loves to hunt and fish anyway it's my pleasure every single week to bring him on as the host for the show so without further ado here is mr ron demers what's going on ron what's up my friend thank you very much yeah no problem hope you're doing well today absolutely i'm doing uh, i'm doing pretty good i'm looking yeah. forward to uh, another episode of uh, diy good um why don't you give some shout outs man i'm gonna do a couple of shares that i forgot to do already so um give some shout outs who who we got online i we got a bunch of people i can see we got brett uh, bonstetler um athena athens uh don campbell uh hunter mclaughlin uh matt gin and gin and whiskey um rebecca dunn two of our mods uh, michael bryant uh, our boy robert cox 
Um, some guy, Dave Gould, is watching. Pretty cool guy. <laughs> shut my mic off. So anyway, I shut my mic off. He was he was doing his little violin thing. Um, mostly when I watch the show is after the show. So that's what I do. Uh, I shut my mic off to give him some instructions to carry the show and talk while I was busy. So. <laughs> We're not yeah. true professionals. We're 99.9%. .9 yeah, well, I challenge anybody to uh, create a better exactly. show. So. Anyhow, um, yeah, just it's it's been going good. Um, if you guys haven't heard or whatnot, I, I'm in Alabama and I'm getting ready in six weeks to move back home, which is California. I grew up in San Jose, California, and uh, so I'm headed back, which means that I got a ton of things going on, a lot of work going on, but it's all good. I get to head back and do all that. Hey, you guys, it's super awesome to see you all. I want to give a special shout out to Shayla and Mackenzie Reed in Satsuma, Alabama, two of the biggest fans of Fish Talk Live. Just absolutely love those girls. And a special shout to you, too, Robert. Um, we normally at this time will, you know, run through a little bit of things to tell you how to better engage with the show. Uh, one of the things you can do is if you hit this bell. So if you're on desktop, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, and you click that bell and you select all. And what will happen is when we go live, you'll get a notification. So another thing you can check out as well, um, I have it set up right now. It's, it's our information service. It's uh, through a chat bot that I set up. So uh, it set up the whole back end to be able to deliver some cool things. So what you can do is if you type in star info right now into the chat, the live chat, you will have a message open up from Fish Talk Live page which you can do several different things. You can get information, like last week I put on the parts list for the DIY project that Ron did. There is also a link for the K1 Media on Amazon if you need to find that tonight. Um, there's information about sponsors, there's information about um, organizations that are close to our heart, which include um, like uh, fouroceans.org, uh, people that are cleaning up the ocean, just different things like that. So you can get a lot more information, you can engage a lot with the uh, show just by typing in star info. Ron, you falling asleep on me, dude? Um, dude, <laughs> I told you, I just found out today from my doctor what it is, and yeah. I, I can't get enough sleep. Yeah, I bet. So, Ron, uh, I don't know how long it's been. I think it's two weeks, two months. Uh, you know that beautiful necklace that he's got. He had uh, three discs removed, and they and they. Not seized up, but they put a plate in there to keep all the vertebrae in line and all that. And he's been um, struggling a little bit with the recovery these last it's been few a weeks. Been last few weeks. Um, yeah. I just found out from the doctor today it's due to that anesthesia they gave me, but uh, I don't have the energy I did before. Yeah. Hey, you know what else is pretty cool? Let's see if I can pop this in. I'm not sure if I can get this to show up. Uh, no, that's not it. No, that's not it. Oh, yeah, it's sort of it. Okay, you see, right? Okay, look. You see the round uh, friends that are watching now. You see that icon just to the left of Ron's head right there? That is, um, you click it and you can invite friends. So if there's anybody that you want to, them to see the show right now, just click that. It's kind of a cool thing. So, um... Normally, we do group shout outs right now, but apparently, um, I'm not too sure what's up with all the other groups on Facebook. They've kind of just abandoned you, us, Ron. <laughs> uh, it kind of went hush hush with the whole yeah. Facebook groups are getting shut down, and everybody's kind of clinched up tight right now, and no one's really, yeah. no one's really looking much. Yeah. So, so um, I, the truth of the matter is, is if you just follow the rules, everything's cool. So, but um, anyhow, if you do have a group, we want to help and we want to promote it. You know, we've get uh, on average, our average has gone up from 3,500 a week to about 4,500 in the last three episodes. Um, but anyway, if you have a group, 
contact us. Go to the chat bot or do whatever. Get in touch with us so that we can say, hey, check out this group. Some of the groups that we do like um, include the groups from our moderators and uh, just a few shout outs there. T our moderator, uh, TJ Huffstetler, we we're thinking about you, bro. Um, but he's got a group called Southeast Fish Addicts. We've got Nathan Pate, who's got an awesome uh, awesome company, but also an awesome group called uh, Crown Royalty Cichlids. Uh, Isaac is out on the West Coast in California. Isaac Garcia with uh, West Coast. Do you remember the full name? West Coast Cichlids? West Coast Cichlids Exchange, I think. Yeah, Cichlid Exchange, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, most of our moderators have s certain businesses and groups that they do. Um, James Smith with ADA Tank Supply. He's also our main uh, moderator for Lake Tanganyika uh, Clubhouse. Scott DeFour for um, Fronto. Frontosa Lovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what we want to do for you if you, you know, uh, so desire. Uh, one thing I have noticed, Ron, is about the shares. Uh, we used to get a lot of drop-offs on the shares. So you can imagine, you know, certain uh, groups mm -hmm. and stuff like, oh, just erase that one, <laughs> you know, erase that one. But they haven't, they don't drop off anymore. Uh, we've got like last week, I think three or four drop-offs. So it's pretty good, uh, the retention's there. Um, we're always looking to create a better show for y'all. Uh, you know, provide more content, uh, become friendlier. And uh, Ron and I are always talking about, we say our show. And when we say our show, we're really talking about you guys as viewers as well. We want you guys to claim ownership on this show because without you guys sharing and promoting and telling people about it, interacting on the chat and all this, this show would be half of what it is. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, there's something really, really, really cool going on on Ron's site. He's got some koozies now. So if you're looking for a Ron Cichlid koozie, you'll find them on the shop. But hey, we're going to give a bunch of these away tonight. Every person that calls in is going to get one of these. Uh, so if you call in tonight, you can have a question. Or if you just want to call in and tell us what you think about Fish Talk Live, we'd love to have you. This is, what, this is the phone number right here. Also, again, you can type star info and get to the phone numbers as well. So you type in star info into the chat right now and you can get there. All right. So I usually have like a funky human interest video that I play every time at the, at the top of the show. And let's check that one out. This one's kind of crazy. If you like animation, this one's for you, Nathan, by the way. I know that you're a huge <laughs> animation fan, so let's check this out. I really have no idea what that's all about. <laughs> probably, probably some guy in college. It's his uh, class project or something. All right. So tonight on this episode, I am you're gonna be watching a video of me doing a K1 media reactor. Um, be available for questions and all that. Before we get into that, let's uh, bring Ron and I back. And uh, so, you know, there's a couple of different things. I had someone that reached out after posting that it was going to be on this and say, you know, those K1 media reactors and this big old long article about flow and all of that. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about the K1 media reactor. This is uh, what we're building tonight is a supplement for bio media in your tank. Uh, you're not going to want to run a 55 or bigger or 125 on this filter. It's not like that. Um, I apparently uh, King K1 
king of DIY. Joey did one. Uh, I actually learned how to make this from my buddy Nelson. Shout out to you, Nelson, who is over here in Robertsdale, Alabama. Um, but there's other videos on YouTube as well. Um, so, you know, I'm going to show you the way I learned how to build it uh, with an air pump. All you need is a simple air pump, some airlines, and uh, uh, some plastic bottles, some K1 media. I'm going to show you that video here in a second. Um, but there is another way, you know, the, some people online talk about, oh, it doesn't have that much flow and, and things like that. So this one guy was trying to, you know. So you can uh, build them with lift tubes. So if you know a sponge, like a Hikari sponge filter, they got the tube on the top. They call that a lift tube, uh, which draws water up through there. Um, obviously, if you were going to have one filter in your tank, like a 20-gallon tank, you'd probably want the lift tube. But like I said, this is just adding a little bit more bio media to your system. So um, it actually adds quite a bit of bio. Um, the amount of beneficial bacteria that can grow on K1 will amaze you. Uh, I had another guy in another group was doing a sand um, a sand reactor and giving me hell saying, oh, sand is just so much better than K1. I'm like, well, I guess if... I mean, why aren't we putting them in our canisters, right? But um, have you ever built one of these, Ron, for uh, tanks? The uh, um, not uh, fluidized that way. I've done them in sumps. I've done them in. Uh, I've yeah. put the media in um, internal, the little internal water polishers, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the video. Now, I want to say this. This is an entry level DIY. This is not a doctrine or master's degree in DIY. It's super simple. I wanted to do this one because I want to challenge you guys. If this is something you want to do, anybody can do it. It's super simple. Here's the video. We'll check it out and then we'll have some questions and answers afterwards. Hey guys, Dave Gould here. And today, is my day for sharing with you a simple DIY filter that you can make, the K1 Media Bioreactor Filter. It's super simple, this is what it looks like when we're done. It's basically a plastic bottle that has holes in the bottom, an air line that's connected, pushes the air through, the uh, bio media gets to circulate, and the flow comes through the top. So what you're gonna need is a plastic bottle like this, it's a Gatorade bottle. Uh, you'll need something to burn the holes through. I'm using an instant hot uh, soldering iron, but you can use any soldering iron. You can probably even use the tip of a glue stick uh, as it gets hot. So you're going to need a glue stick uh, for that as well. That will help keep some of these on there. You're going to need an L-shaped um, airline uh, piece and you're gonna need some suction cups. So there's two kinds of suction cups. This is the kind that holds the airline on there, and this is the kind that has a little stud. These actually work a little better. So that's what we're gonna do. I get a chance to show you how to make a K1 media reactor. All right, guys, so let's get started. Like I said, the first thing you're gonna need is a um, a clear plastic bottle. Clear is cool because you get to see the media transfer through there. Now the first thing we want to do is clean the bottle out obviously whatever was in there, wash it out really good. And we're going to need some holes around the bottom, we're going to need some holes through the top, and we're going to need a, one single hole for the airline to go through there. So let's do that first. Like I said we can do that with a soldering iron. So here is an Insta-Hot soldering iron, six seconds to heat up, and here we go. So we just go ahead and make this hole through there, make sure it's big enough. One of the things you can do is try to insert your guy in there while the plastic is still warm. There's that. Now we're going to need a bunch of holes along the bottom to draw in the water and then the output holes. So that's super simple. As soon as we get some heat on this. And about every inch all the way around. And we just keep popping these holes in. Around. Okay, so these are your holes that are going to draw in the water. Just 
just make those holes bigger, smaller. But that's roughly about what you want to do. You're also going to want two holes in a straight line that are going to hold this in the aquarium. So we can put one hole right, right here, make that big enough to get that suction cup through there. And then in the same line, that one here, one. The other holes you're going to need are across the top. Uh, these holes are what are going to release the air. So I like to put them like right on the, the ridge, you see there, so that the air will flow up through that way. And again, about every inch and just go all the way around. Just like that. Now, and that's pretty much the toughest part. Um, you're going to attach your um, suction cups here, like this. So there we go. Make sure you get it pushed in there, just like that. Now we're going to take the hot glue gun and we're going to go ahead and seal all the way around that hole so that they stay in and it also at the top you're going to seal that in. Uh, you also want to probably take some glue, put the glue right here all the way around and put some glue on the outside to hold that in there and keep that nice and straight. And that is in itself is the building part. Here let's show you again what our, our permanent one looks like. And then you put some hot, you see the glue's there, the glue's there. Now, you're gonna need K1 media, and look how much I have in here. You, about 60%, 50 to 60% is how much you wanna fill it up. And one of the other things that I do, and this is a good uh, you know, hack or a trick, is what I do is I also pull out some of my heavy media, whether it's a bio, ball, uh, bio um, ceramic, or matrix as I use, and I'll put some matrix in there from my canister. What that does is it's now sitting there and it allows that bacteria on there to seed through here. So the next thing is, hook up the airline here, put it in your aquarium. You're gonna notice when you first do this that um, all of the media is gonna go to the top and it won't tumble like it's supposed to. Now the reason for that is because they're neutrally buoyant, these, uh, plastic pieces and it takes uh, anywhere from five days to two weeks for the bacteria to grow on it. Once the bacteria is starting to grow on it, then it's going to do a full tumble and you'll see it tumble. Just so you know when you first do that. So let's put this in the aquarium and see what it looks like. Here we go guys. Here is our bottle with our uh, end. We're going to attach the airline directly to the end. Let's see, you can see it right there. And now we are going to put this and submerge this into... Maybe nobody will notice. ...the aquarium. And as you can see there, we now have circulating in there your bioreactor airline. Now, like I said, some of this material is going to stay stuck at the top because it's still neutrally buoyant. And until, you'll see I also got some black bio balls, a little different size, that also helps it as well. Um, but once the bacteria grows on all of this K1 media, the whole bottle will be floating and doing what it's doing. Alright guys, this is a simple DIY that you can do tonight. Uh, there's a link on the K1 in the chat bot. Uh, the K1 is about oh, 10 or ten to 15 dollars and you get a huge bag of it. This is probably just about a dollar's worth of K1 right there, if that. So I challenge you, go out and do this and make yourself a pretty awesome filter. It's great for adding a little extra bio to your aquarium. All right. Okay, so um, that's what we've done. That's a simple DIY. You gonna make one tonight, Ron, before you go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Yeah, yeah.
<laughs> yeah, so um, obviously if you have any questions about that, um, start putting those in the chat. We'll answer any of those questions for you. Um, turn this music down. That music always wants to go so loud. It's funny, Ron, when you're checking out your own video of your own tanks, it's like you see stuff. So I was noticing that little Rusty that was in there. Man, he looked a little beat up. But I, uh, so, you know, like I said at the beginning of the show, I'm moving. And, uh, so I went from seven tanks, I'm down to one tank. Well, two tanks. I've got a goldfish in the other one that I haven't broke down yet. But. So they're all in there. I just put them in there and they, they start beating the hell out of each other, obviously. But. <laughs> Giving the new guys a rough go. Yeah. So, okay. So then we'll go ahead and we're going to take a break. Um, let me show you guys the calling graphic again real quick. Uh, if you want to call in. So tonight uh, we are going to um, give away a koozie for everybody that calls in. Um, so if you want to do that, just, even if you don't have any questions, you feel free to call in and tell us what you think about Fish Talk Live. We'll be right back. Hey, um, this first one that I'm going to show about Aquashella. Hey, Ron's going to be there. So if you ever wanted to meet Ron, uh, check him out. He's going to be up there um, it's September 29th. Here's the promo for that. Welcome everybody to Aqua Shella Day One. This is without a doubt an experience. I've never been to a show like this. I walk around and into these different rooms and look at this artwork, taking pictures and videos of things that I've never seen in 30 years of being in the industry. To see a show of this magnitude bring the two together, fresh water is yes. often the segue to salt water. There are more corals here than other shows that we've been to. Everybody brought this revolution of artwork. It brings the, the show to a brand new show. Just give me a try. And I swear, I swear we could be gigantic. So if you guys don't know, Aquashella is a new festival style aquarium show. Um, both Ron and I were going to be there, but because of my move, I can't necessarily do that. But Ron's going to be up there with Hunter, his son, and a uh, great chance to meet him and, and all that. And get to see all this great, cool craziness. It's part art show, part music show, part fish show. Really enjoyable. Cool to check out. You have a choice, right now, today. You can remain indifferent, or you can choose to act boldly, wisely, sustainably. What will you choose? So again, I want to give a shout out to one of our moderators that does a lot of work for Ron. Uh, James Smith is an awesome guy. His uh, business is ADA Tank Supply. Him and his partner out in Springfield, Missouri. They have some of the coolest soyu and oko rocks, also some holy rock. Um, I think they're also selling the HW5000 Sun Sun as well. So check them out. ADA Tank Supply. ADATankSupply.com. talk live you guys have helped me so much between Ron Cichlid Clubhouse and Ron Cichlids and Fish Talk Live my tank now is up and running the fish are happy and your guys's advice has got me through everything thank you so much everyone if you don't know you should watch Fish Talk Live they have their own Facebook so make sure you go and give it a like also there's a show on weekly where you can win prizes 
real prizes that don't cost you money. And they're awesome. Yeah, thanks a lot, Athena, for that testimonial. So Ron Demers' official Facebook groups include the Aqua DIY Facebook group, and Buna Hangout, Lake Tanganyika Clubhouse, the Amazing Tank Showcase, uh, New World Cichlid Hangout, and of course the main group is Ron Demers' Cichlid Clubhouse um, and the Aquarius Marketplace. So come check out those if you're looking for a cool group with no drama, cool people, great topics. Come check out Ron facebook groups you're gonna love it all right let's bring ron back and see what kind of questions we got we don't have any call-ins yet you know what that means usually time to give away a truck <laughs> hey so we want to know how you guys are doing what's going on i'm not seeing the chat at all so i'm not sure if there's what the questions are i'm just i might not have any questions yet yeah so that either means that i <laughs> answered them all in the video or um peeps all right so uh, let me pull this full thing up you know while we're sitting here and looking at this okay so we use some powerful software to uh do live shows and all of that um looking at a couple of different things here um one thing i found out last night ron was that uh twitch if you if you use Twitch application on on Amazon Fire TV, right? I'm trying to find our stuff to bring us back here. This is. Do what you I want my mic on or off? It can be on. Okay. Anyway, so uh, Amazon uh, Fire TV. If you if you use the Twitch app and you search for Ron Cichlid, you can watch all these shows on your television. But what's cool about doing it that way is that it shows you the chat for everybody. So you see the Twitch chat, you see the Facebook chat, you see the YouTube chat, you see them all at one oh, place, really? which is pretty cool. What's that? So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. So um, what's up, Ron? <laughs> Are you doing all right? No, I'm not feeling well, man. I'm uh, sorry. That's all good. I just worry about you. <laughs> Like you look like you might be still guy. alive. It's just been my recovery's been a roller coaster. I got good days and I've got bad. It's been it's been rough for about a week and a half now. My right. apologies to everybody. You know I try to be as high energy as I can, but I'm uh, I'm recovering and some days are good, some days aren't, so it's all good. So um next week we've uh why don't you tell everybody about your DIY project for next week? Um Hunter and I filmed um, something that um, people have been asking me for 20 something years. I've done PowerPoint presenta presentations, but um, we finally did a video of my uh, internal canister filters. For any of you who have ever been um, to my facility, you guys have seen the filters that I run in my 275 gallon vats. They're uh, a uh, do it yourself canister filter, um, they're about 60, 70 bucks. And um, I run them in all my setups, basically. You can put them in a fish tank as well, but it's a, a relative eyesore in a fish tank, uh, unless it's a you know an outdoor tub or pond or something. So um, we did a really good video, step by step by step, and um, we should have that for next week. Awesome. So we did get one question here. I just want to thank Kelsey Westrop, Plastic. Uh, for um, sending the question in. It said he wants to know, or she, I'm sorry if I get this wrong, uh, can you put ceramic biomedia parts into the bottle? Well, it kind of takes away from the um, the fluidized part. Um, the reason we're using the K1 is that it keeps that constant motion. Um, it's also a very cool animation in the tank, if you saw there at the end of the video. So, Plus something everybody needs to realize with a fluidized bed filter, regardless of what media you use, it has to have some type of buoyancy because um, it acts as it's uh, self-cleaning. So uh, if it's something heavy like in the canister, it'll typically bind up. Though, you know, your detritus and your crud will kind of build up in there and it won't 
some of it won't get through where when it's fluidized it's moving all that crud is getting through there so this is just biological set up the way uh dave built it it's set up for biological and um it'll self-cleaning you never have to worry about cleaning it yeah. that's the reason why you want some buoyancy in the material yeah your your uh k1 will darken a little bit but that is a good thing that means that you know you've got your critters growing on there colonizing exactly um the bottle also will pick up some algae and different things like that um yeah I've, I've I have had them each one of those in each tank. I also use them for seeding, you know, like to um, move them into smaller tanks and things like that, just as you would with a bio sponge. Um, so yeah, um, thank you so much for the questions, Kelsey. Um, we, if there's no other questions and everybody's good with the way that went, then we'll just uh, move on. Uh, we were going to give away $5,000 cash to the first caller, but I guess we'll have to try to do that on a different episode, Ron. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Um, all right, I'm going to roll the member video of the week. So this video is uh, one that we've played before uh, from Miguel Ramos, but it's such an awesome video that I wanted to show it again. Beautiful tank. It's uh, got a lot going on with colors, with the plastic lights and the dark gravel. Um, but uh, on, on the bottom there, you, on the bottom right, the blue ones, those are uh, electric blue fryer eye, real pretty fish. You've got uh, a couple more eye dolphins on the bottom there. And then in the middle there, with the stripe, there's a, a red empress. And then that OB there in the middle is looking at us as a, an OB empress. Um, that one with the, the red in his fins and blue on the face. And one with the stripes and the blue face is a, a John Stone eye. He's got uh, some Taiwan reefs in there and uh, just a lot of uh, beautiful fish. You know, plastic plants aren't for everybody, but this is kind of tasteful with the colors and just kind of, you know, just screams color from a, a, a long distance. Yeah, I, lo I love it because of the color. Uh, and the, the level of stocking. This is a great level of stocking for African cichlids. Um, just some really beautiful fish um, and a good combination. So there's just obviously a lot of love in this tank. And um, then the, uh, the dragon uh, stones look nice as well. So anyway, we wanted to play that again for you, Miguel. Uh, thanks again for sending that in. Uh, if you would like for us to put your uh, video on Clubhouse Video of the Week, uh, there is a upload URL. You upload it to us, and we will put you on the show. So as you guys all know, Ron Cichlids is a social platform. Uh, you can find Ron Cichlids on Instagram at Ron's underscore Cichlids, and also on Twitter at Rondemers6. So you guys all know what this means. to give stuff away yeah uh, usually uh, so to give you guys an idea we have some gamified software where we use a spin to win wheel and in the spin to win wheel we have uh, I think it's 24 different prizes on there we change those up on occasion you can get discounts on Ron cichlids you can win food you can win equipment for your tanks you can win fish there's all sorts of really cool stuff that you can win uh, we do it differently all the time, but generally what we do is we'll do it by hashtags. And um, so tonight we're going to need a hashtag. Do you want to figure out a hashtag for us there, Ron? Hmm. I need to start thinking about these before the show. <laughs> yeah. Um, hashtag, I don't know. I, was, I don't want to make it difficult. I would say fluidized, but I don't know if... if How it, about if, K1? There you go. We'll make it easy. Hashtag K1 is what it's going to be, everybody. So what you do is you type hashtag, which is your number symbol, and K1. Uh, that's just the, the numeral one. And you'll see it here in a second. Into the chat right now, and we'll be able to pull off a win uh, spinner from that. So here we go. Um, you've got about 45 seconds to enter that in during this song. So go ahead and enter hashtag K1. 
hashtag K1. You can see it right there, uh, how it's supposed to look. Put that in the chat right now, and we'll uh, pull someone off uh, as a winner for that. Hashtag K1, everybody. Okay, it's hashtag K1. And that's the numeral one. So hashtag a K and numeral one. All right, you got a little bit more time. Hashtag K1 is going to be the hashtag we're going to draw from. Uh, I'm feeling frisky. I'm feeling like doing something totally crazy. And, uh, of course, you've got to be on the show in order to spin. So what happens is if you are picked, then we're going to ask you to, to, to type in the chat so we know you're there. And if you're there, then you're going to be spinning the wheel. And if you spin the wheel, you already won. So hashtag K1. Okay, that should do it. All right. Hashtag K1. Uh, looks like we got a caller. You're going to have to hold off just a second, caller. Or actually, we we'll probably pull you in right now. Um, let's see here. All right, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and pull the caller in. How's it going, caller? You're on Fish Talk Live. Uh, give us your name and your location, please. My name please. is Josh Vega. What's up, Josh? And I'm in Cocoa, Florida. Nice. How are you doing today? Nice. Hey, do you drink beer, Josh? Or soft drinks? Or anything out of a can? Yes. Awesome. We're gonna send you. A <laughs> we're gonna send you a koozie. I was sitting there thinking, well, maybe I don't want to like out them if you know. I don't know, but. Uh, oh, call me out. Yeah, call you out. Hey, are you drinking beers now? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, we're all adults here and, and we have stressful days and, you know, a beer might take the edge off of that. Absolutely. Or Absolutely. Two. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, did you have a question or a comment? Uh, I actually did have a question. That's what I was calling in for. Nice. All right. I was I was calling in to acquire some information about a DUI vi or a DIY video on building a fish tank stand out of two by fours for a 55 gallon aquarium. Awesome. Um, I've been contemplating making one. The thing is, is I don't have any tanks to put them on. So I would build a stand and then I would end up taking it apart. So, um, I got some that I already have built that I was thinking about just, uh, doing a video and explaining, um, the structural, um, design like of it. the measurements. Well, the measurements are, are going to be all up to you. Basically, you're going to measure the bottom of the tank. Um, length times width and you're gonna you're gonna make it to to fit on that and whatever height you want uh, Ultimately, you're gonna want to see some type of video or something and a lot of other people have, have made posts recently That's another reason why I was thinking about just leaving it alone is um, The people are showing um, their posts and uh, their videos of, of how they built them. It's uh, uh, relatively easy, but uh, I'm not certain at this point in time if I'm gonna make one I'll probably just show as I said, how I've done uh, the ones that I already have that are pre-existing. Okay, because my biggest concern was um, the weight factor because I'm putting it on a carpet floor in the living room and I have two young kids and three cats and a dog and I don't want them to accidentally bump it into it and then it falls and kills the kids or kills the fish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you definitely don't want to hurt your children. Uh, yeah. if, if, if that's the situation, you may just want to go buy a stand um, that way, if it does hurt somebody, you can sue them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, you know, um, here, here's a here's a, a little hack that I've got. So if you go on um, Petco.com and you look up for a steel stand, they're going to show you one for a 40 gallon. Now, it's going to be 36 wide. So uh, what I ended up doing is I bought two um, one inch uh, 
pine boards, and I stained them really nice. It's a black, it's welded, it's steel, it's got uh, uh, feet on the bottom for adjusting the level and all that. Um, and then I just had it hang over. So your 55 is going to be closer to 48 inches, and you're going to have uh, roughly 6 inches on each side that kind of hang over. Um, I wouldn't do that with anything much bigger than that, but I did have a 75 on it. It worked great. It was awesome. $50 stand, brand new. Really you can awesome. find uh, uh, an old dresser. Um, they, they work pretty well. Like uh, That's what uh, I was looking for, like a dresser or um, an entertainment stand or something that can hold the weight. What you're going to want to do is if you don't trust the top, like Dave said, you're going to want to put a piece of plywood or something on top of it to support the weight. Second thing, which a lot of people overlook is with a tank like a 55, it's very skinny. So, you know, when you get a dresser or something that's very high, they usually include an anchor point. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find a stud in the wall. Stud in the wall. And you're going to want some type of tether between the wall and your tank so the tank can't actually the stand can't actually uh fall forward yeah just, okay so yeah like anchor it in there yeah you could just put a like a six inch eight inch tether just to where if it yeah. starts to go forward you know it just takes up the slack okay awesome so uh we really appreciate you calling in we're going to get you that koozie the way you do that is you um go on to fish talk live send a message in this menu you'll see um look through the menu and you'll uh, in the messenger and you'll see claim prize uh, but we'll get you out that koozie we really appreciate you calling in bro thanks for calling in all right, all right. thank you yeah take care bye all right see ya. okay so um cheryl coley also had a uh, question about uh, a filter for 125 Yes, Ron is going to show you that. Um, isn't that what you're doing next week? Is well, the, the filter? filter that I'm doing next week is a, an internal canister filter. You can use it in a fish tank if you want. You just It's pretty good size. Um, you either going to want to hide it or it's more or less designed for uh, anybody who has larger tanks outside or um, something that could be run in a, uh, a sump or something. Yeah. But it's something that I've been asked about for 20-something years, and, and, and once a week I get asked. So uh, I needed to build it. Yeah. So, yeah, Ron builds really cool filters and uh, all of that. I was trying to call. The then I'm going to make another one very soon. Um, we get questions a lot about uh, sumps, and there's a lot of people a little standoffish about diving into a sump. And then once they realize how much sumps cost sometimes, um, they want to either use another type of filter, they want to learn how to build one themselves. So um, I've got a very practical design um, that just involves a fish tank and kind of like my internal canister, just um, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, deconstructed basically and, and turned into a wet dry sump very easy to make as well awesome so that's coming up next week hey we're gonna pick now let's see uh the hashtag on k1 so let's bring up the software that's gonna allow us to do that you can see here on the top one that's episode number 42 we're gonna pick a winner from there and uh, if you've seen me do this before um, i always clear it out first and the first one is not our winner it's actually just to process through and do that. So I just unpick that. Sorry, Matt, Jen and Lisky. All <laughs> right, so here we go. As you can see here, I picked by hashtag. And that hashtag is KY. <laughs> Someone actually put that in. K1 is what we're looking for. Uh, so uh, the person that's going to be spinning to win right now is, uh, is going to be... Uh, Walt Leonard. So if you are on the chat right now, please say that I'm here and you're ready to go, Mr. Walt Leonard. Um, not moderators, please push that to me because I can't see any of the chat. I don't see any of it right now. So um, Normally we pick two, um, but I think since this is such a low-key show and we don't have those viewers on there, I think we should probably just stick to one this week, Ron. 
Um, if you guys want to help to try to, you know, share this out more and, and all of that so we can get those higher numbers, we're more than willing to, to give those out or maybe I'm thinking wrong. <laughs> is, Walt, <laughs> is Walt there? <laughs> hey, Walt, are you there? Walt Leonard. We're going to pick another one. I'm just teasing. Um, but I would like to see people share this out more. I think a lot of people are like, oh, someone else is going to share it. But, you know, when we get the shares, we get 180, 90 people on. Um, let's see. I still can't see any of this stuff. Uh, it's like being blind. Okay, so Tasha says Walt is there. So congratulations, Walt. Uh, we are now going to pull up the spin to win wheel, which is right here. And let me just put myself on this side. Sit up straight. So we've got a lot of cool prizes on here. Normally how we do this is we can pick a color. There's two colors uh, on each wheel and a position. Uh, and then we're going to do that. So why don't you pick those things for us, Ron? Whoops. So hold, hold on a second. Let me re refresh here. I don't know what's going on. Okay. All right. So which color? Uh, Yellow. Three o'clock. Yeah. And you want to move that to where? Uh, 11 o'clock. Okay. So right there coming around it's at nine o'clock right now that's about 11 o'clock right there we do have a drum roll for this by the way <laughs> all right congratulations walt you're already a winner let's see what you won all right and a drum roll please nice there you go winner winner chicken dinner so that is our grand prize. Congratulations, Walt. Let's blow up the chat right now. Let's congratulate this man for winning a large fish of his choice off of ronsicklids.com. So, grand prize. Good job, Walt. Yep, good job. Awesome. That's the way it is. That's why, you know, if you're uh, tuning in to win, that's what you want to do right there. All right. So uh, let me bring, uh, let's see. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Let's bring this back. Uh, how do you want to do do the rest? What do you want to do, Ron? I'm going to leave this up to you. Lead me. Um, if you want to just do some, uh, just pick some winners, we can give away a couple more cozies if you want. Yeah. All right, then. Just pull them out of the chat or anywhere. Yeah, I'm going to just pull these off of right here on Woobox. Okay, so I'm going to say anybody that commented, and uh, we're only going to do by one. Let me pull up the woo picker right here. As you can see right here, anybody that commented, anybody that reacted. So if you reacted, you're in there double. Um, how many do you want to pick? We'll do two. Okay. So Tasha, Tasha Dunn is uh, going to get one. And then also... She went twice. Yeah, one for there. As you know, we can't make that happen for you. So, so here's the other one. And uh, James Smith. So awesome. So you know, here's here's how this works. We've said this from day one, is that our moderators and um, chat moderators and everything are just as entitled to win stuff off of this show as anyone. So congratulations to two of our mods for doing that. That might uh, that might interfere with what you we were doing earlier, you know, on, on yeah. our, our private thing. Uh, do you want to try to pick a couple more? If any more mods don't show up, you want to do it like that? Yeah, because yeah. my moderators already get them for free. That's what <laughs> yeah. it goes down to. Yeah. All right. So um, let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's do it off that hashtag. Uh, KY. There we go. All right, so here is another koozie that's going out to someone. <laughs> How funny is that? So uh, Kaylee Nyberg and uh, Brody Lundgren. Actually, Katie, uh, Kaylee, we're going to pull her off. She's a moderator. And then we also <laughs> have off the K1. The night we should have been giving away F-150s, right? Yeah. <laughs> Also, uh, Rob DeFrez, uh, you also are going to get a, get one as well. So you guys just go through the um, Fish Talk Live page 
uh, send a message to us saying I won and then you'll notice in the menu there'll be pr claim prize and we'll send you through that little thing we just need to get your address and your phone number um, obviously anybody you know uh, in, well never mind with that um, I had three thoughts in my head all at one time and then they all exploded and I don't know what to say uh, what was I going to say I was going to say something really kind of cool, but I cannot remember. Anyway, let's bring Ron, Ron back. We probably got some weird, uh, you know, meteor shower combined with uh, solar flares and a full moon eclipse or something going on tonight. But, you know, the day after the 13th. Hey, if you guys know me, I'm usually really, really sharp. So, anyhow, um, I guess we're going to wrap it up. There was something that I wanted to say, though, and I cannot remember. You already said how awesome I was. Probably yeah. don't want to say that again. Yeah. Um, it had something to do with the videos, but anyway, I don't know. Anyway, it was a pleasure to be able to do this for you guys tonight. Normally, um, you know, we rely on Ron's expertise, uh, but it was fun to do that and make the video for you guys. I hope everybody makes a K1 reactor. That's uh, the K1 media is about 10, d depending. There's one that's 10 bucks for a gallon of it. And you really only use a handful or a little bit more than a handful, which is less than a dollar's worth of K1. So make these. They're actually really good little farms for bacteria. And uh, stick them in your tanks and use them to seed stuff. You know, uh, something I'd like to offer you guys is as um you guys are building stuff on your own as well so take a video of it you know if you if you know that you're going to be building the stand in the next week or so or if you're going to be building a filter or you're going to be doing some take a video of it say hi and um don't be shy behind the camera um, just make sure you do it you know uh horizontal and you're close enough that we got some good audio and uh take a video and uh send it to us uh, maybe one one of the episodes we'll do uh a uh, bunch of little clips of uh, member DIY, uh, DIYs, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. like member of the week video, but do DIYs. Yeah. And super congratulations to you, Walt, for winning that fish. We love to see the grand prize. And then also uh, join up with the Ron Cichlids DIY group. You know, there are some stand builds already in there that I've seen that are just great. So um, do all those things. We're going to catch you next week with Ron uh, doing his filter. Uh, super awesome to be with you guys tonight. And uh, we'll check you later. You got the final word there, Mr. Ron Demers. Night, guys. Love all you guys. Thank you for uh, all your engagement on the um, on the uh, clubhouse and all the groups. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be doing another raffle here very, very soon. Uh, congratulations uh, last week to uh, George uh, Deerlam. He won the FX4. <laughs> That's what I was trying to remember. <laughs> Just sent <laughs> Thank that you, out Ron. yesterday. It's yeah. on. It's on the way, George. You yeah. should have it in a few days. Yeah. Um, and um, we'll keep keep an eye out for some future raffles. So, thanks, guys. I love you. Uh, sorry, I'm a little under the weather today, but uh, right. I'm I'm trying to get better. All right. We'll see you guys. Take care. See you next week. And if this is your first show, stay tuned past the credits because we always play a little extra in there. So if you stick out past these credits. That's when we do the big giveaway. <laughs> That's when we give away the cash and cars. Thanks, everybody. We got over 140,000 views to date. Appreciate it. Welcome to Top Ten Archive. The horrifying depths of the ocean remains vastly unexplored. It seems the deeper down we submerge, the scarier and more horrifying the creatures that live therein are. From the giant squid, once thought to be nothing more than a myth, to bone-eating worms, we bring you our picks for the top 10 creepiest sea creatures you didn't know existed. Number 10. Sarcastic Fringe Head The sarcastic fringe head is just too cool not to mention. 
And okay, sure it doesn't necessarily live in the deepest, darkest, coldest depths of the ocean, but it's still down there a little, living 10 feet or 3 meters to 240 feet or 73 meters below sea level, outside the breaker zone along the many open coastlines. This fish usually grows to be less than 10 inches or 25 centimeters long, but have been documented to reach 12 inches or 30 centimeters in length. They are fearless and extremely aggressive fish, rushing towards anything that dare approach their burrows. Their body is elongated, slender, and relatively compressed, and have a long dorsal fin which extends from the back of the head to almost the caudal fin. Sarcastic French heads have large, rounded heads with a huge jaw that can extend past the eye, lined with numerous needle-like teeth. Number 9. Frilled Shark Known as a living fossil, the frilled shark is such a unique, rare, and unusual creature that the two known species, the frilled shark and the southern African frilled shark, are placed in their own order. The frilled shark usually lives in the deep marine areas of Japan, 200 to 4,200 feet or 60 to 1,280 meters in depth, but are also known to be throughout the eastern Pacific, eastern Atlantic, and Indian Oceans as well. And the more newly discovered species, the southern African frilled shark, is found in the waters around Africa. Unlike most sharks, the frilled shark has an eel-like, long, thin body, six gills covered by frill-like skin flaps, from which it derives its name, and typically grows to roughly six and a half feet or two meters in length. Number eight, giant squid. These monster squids, believed once to be nothing more than creatures of myth, survive in the icy cold depths of 1,650 feet or 500 meters to 3,300 feet or 1,000 meters. Though big, stories about their actual size have been, so far, largely exaggerated, with claims that they get to 66 feet or 20 meters in length, though never documented. The largest on record measures out to 43 feet or 13 meters in length. Some researchers believe there are multiple species of giant squid, possibly up to eight different species. Other researchers, however, think there is just one. Giant squids are thought to live worldwide, based upon the shores they have washed up on, commonly being the shores of New Zealand and Pacific Islands, and have also made frequent appearances throughout the eastern and western sides of the northern Atlantic Ocean and along the southern coast of Africa. Number 7. Oarfish The incredibly long, slender, and strange-looking oarfish is the largest known bony fish in the seas getting as long as about 36 feet or 11 meters and weigh up to 600 pounds or 270 kilograms. Rarely, the oarfish has been known to swim up to shore, but they prefer the depths of roughly 3,000 feet or 914 meters. A more modern day belief is that the Argus was the basis for the ancient myths about the great and powerful sea serpents. But as fearsome as their mythological brethren may have been, the simple truth of the matter is they possess no visible teeth and live primarily off of plankton. The species is rarely observed by humans, encounters so uncommon, it's usually only when they are washed up on shore that we get to see living samples of the creatures. In fact, they so rarely come up to the ocean surface, it wasn't until 2001 when a live oarfish would finally be captured on film recorded by the U.S. Navy. Number 6. Barrel Eye Boasting a highly unique and transparent head, the Pacific barrel eye fish has a developed and highly sensitive pair of barrel-like eyes topped by green spherical lenses from which it derives its name. The first barrel eye to be discovered alive was found in the depths of California's central coast between 2,000 feet or 600 meters and 2,600 feet or 800 meters in depth, wherein it makes its home. Growing to lengths of one and a half feet or half a meter, Barrel eyes possess small mouths, and we've observed that they are very precise while striking at their small prey, usually that of smaller fish, like plankton and jellyfish. The barrel eyes seemingly tend to float stationary in place, maintaining a near motionless manner by using their large flat fins. When it does spot food, however, it rotates its eyes towards the object to include its mouth in its field of view. The first barrel eye specimen to have its soft and transparent head intact was found by the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute in 2009. Number 5. Chimera First found around the 4200-foot or 1280-meter depth, 
the fish known as the chimera looks as if it's stitched together from random parts of other fish and contains no bones in its body, having a skeletal structure made of hardened cartilage. Accustomed to lurking in the cold, dark depths of the ocean, it utilizes its sensory organs on either side of its head to detect electrical fields in the water to locate its prey. Considered to be one of the oldest species of fish, most chimera have mildly venomous spines along their backs and are often called by other names like ratfish, rabbitfish, and ghost sharks, though they are no sharks themselves. Their origin branched off from the shark, its closest relative, some 400 million years ago and have mostly gone unchanged since their sharing of the earth with the dinosaurs. Number 4. Zombie Worms Ozodex. Okay, so they don't really crave brains and they can't come back to life. The Ozodax, better known as the Zombie Worm, gets its nickname due to the way they seek out bones to devour and feast upon. Growing to average lengths of 1 to 3 inches or 2 to 7 centimeters, they were first discovered around 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters below the ocean's surface, feasting upon the decaying bones of a gray whale. They do this by secreting an acid from their skin, dissolving the bone which exposes the protein and fat found within. However, the Ozdax has no mouth or stomach of their own, so they utilize symbiotic bacteria that live inside the worm. The bacteria digest the protein and fat and distribute it to the worm host in a currently unknown manner. Number 3. Giant Isopod Though it looks like something from an alien planet, the giant isopod comes from the ocean depths, found some 550 to 7,020 feet, or roughly 170 to 2,140 meters down, and grows to average lengths of 12 to 16 inches or 30 to 40 centimeters, making it the largest of the isopod family. Being a carnivorous creature, the giant isopod scuttles across the deep sea floor where light is scarce, scavenging for any food it may find as it feels around through the use of its large antennae, eating anything from the decaying bodies of other marine life to any slow-moving creatures such as sea cucumbers and sponges. Number 2. Tardigrades With about 800 different species known to exist worldwide, tardigrades, also known as the water bear, is a micro-animal and lives all over the world in any sort of extreme condition. These little guys are just pure awesome. They can breathe in anything and anywhere, from the vacuum of space to 600 times that of normal atmospheric pressure. They can survive in both extremely low temperatures and immense desiccation or severe dryness, being exposed to extreme temperatures of minus 272 degrees Celsius or minus 458 degrees Fahrenheit, rooms filled with helium gas and suspended in liquid air at minus 190 degrees Celsius or minus 310 degrees Fahrenheit for 21 months and after all of this emerged alive. When the little guys finally decide to kick the bucket and die off, their body encases itself in a glass-like substance. I mean, come on, that's just cool! Number 1. Bobbit Worm looking like a sarlacc pit from hell, one with powerful, retracting barbed jaws that we think even Boba Fett couldn't escape. The bobbit worm grows up to an astounding 10 feet or about 3 meters in length and intertwines itself into the loose soils of the ocean floor, around 30 to 150 feet or 10 to 45 meters or so in depth, where it lies in wait for prey to swim or crawl by. They are typically found in the warm ocean waters, such as those that surround the Indo-Pacific region. If you happen to see one and want to touch it, don't. No. Just no. The bobbit worm is covered with many bristles, all of which can cause permanent nerve damage. The amazing speed, combined with sharp teeth, make this worm a superior predator, and it's not uncommon for them to slice fish in half with a single strike and can even chew through coral reef. To us, it looks like something out of a nightmare, and we're pretty sure you'll agree. Do you have an idea for a future top 10 video? Let us know in the comments section below. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and our website, top10archive.net. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with all of your family and friends.